Hello, this is Elvin from Dr. Wealth. For those who have been following this channel, you would have known that I talk about China stocks rebound is relying on international fund flows, right? Especially for Hong Kong stocks because um, the mainland Chinese don't really invest in Hong Kong because there's a limit to how much they can buy is via the uh, Shanghai Hong Kong Stock Ex uh, Connect or the Shenzhen Hong Kong Stock Connect and there is a daily limit to how much they can flow the money from uh, north to south right called the southbound uh, direction and therefore Hong Kong stocks whether they go up or down is highly dependent on whether foreigners are investing in Hong Kong stocks and I said that Hong Kong stocks will never be able to rebound until the foreign fund flows come in. Due to the geopolitical tension, we know that uh, in the past few years, a lot of the money has flowed out of Hong Kong and hence the Hang Seng stocks have not been doing well. But things have changed, right? Since the two weeks ago, right, end of April, uh, the fund flows started to go in, right? There was also a report by UBS and who says that the uh, Hong Kong stocks are rallying because the fund, the hedge funds are actually going back into Hong Kong stocks, seeing that there may be a rebound coming. And of course, as more and more stocks uh, and more and more funds pile into Hong Kong, the stocks goes up and that would also give the signal and say, hey, maybe Hong Kong stocks have really rebounded. So in this video, we're going to discuss okay, whether Hong Kong stocks are indeed rebounding all right and this is what happened for the past week the Hang Seng index have gone up about six percent and the prior week before was seven percent gain as well so it is very likely um, these two weeks Hong Kong stocks are the best performing market geographically uh, around the world okay so that may come to uh, be, a, be a surprise for some investors right because they have always seen Hong Kong stocks as something that is uh, really uh, hopeless, uh, cannot rebound and I guess that this is a sign that maybe better things are coming and it is time to really watch this space alright so it's a good encouraging sign for the past two weeks Hong Kong stock has been up more than 10 over percent so I wanted to drill down deeper and see what is the what are the kind of stocks that are really running what are the stocks that are driving the Hang Seng index upwards so I look at the sectors, right, and what I gathered was that there were three main sectors that the Hang Seng index were uh, the, the increase in share price was underpinned by. So first group is the financials, which are your banks and insurance. The second is tech, and then the third one is properties. Okay, so that is a surprise because a lot of people also view the China property crisis as something that is not resolvable, uh, something that is uh, going to stay down for a long period of time, and they even expect that more property companies are going to go under. So uh, property sector being one of the best performer for the past one week may be a surprise to some of the investors once more. So um, I guess when it comes to investing, it's always good not to have that preconceived notion of certain things or our assumptions because sometimes our assumptions may not be correct. And what this means is that investors generally believe that the worst is over for China properties. And that's why both the properties and the financials are going up because financials lend money to the property developers. And if the developers goes down, the banks would need to write off their loans. So with these two sectors going up, it tells you that investors don't fear that sector getting worse. So that may be a sign of a bottoming of the Chinese property market. And the tech, because of the regulatory actions over the past few years by the government trying to restrain uh, the growth of certain tech companies and that fear has also really dissipated. The last regulatory clampdown uh, probably more than a year ago, right? And hence, that's also a sign that the worst is also over for the tech sector. So I guess the, the sectors that were affected the most in the last three years have now become the best performers. So that is generally a positive sentiment again. Okay, and I want to drill in deeper to each of these sectors. So the first one will be the financials, which are the banks and insurance. So let me blow this up for you. You can see that the top performer, I rank them by this week's uh, top gainers. Uh, AIA, for example, is up 13% this week. Ping An Insurance is up 9% this week. And Hong Kong Stock Exchange is up 8% this week. And you can see that majority are dominated by insurance company. And then thereafter are the banks. Right, like your HSBC, China Merchant Bank, China Construction Bank, ICBC. But you can see for the whole week, the Hang Seng financials, right, all the index components have gone up and none of them had a negative week. 
right? So that is a overall quite a bullish sentiment that's going on. And let's look at their financials, right? So I rank them by the by the uh, dividend yield because a lot of these banks or financials they give quite good dividend yield, and that's what most investors buy them for, right? Because they like the collect the dividends. If we look at the uh, big three banks, right? China Construction Bank (CCB), ICBC, as well as Bank of China, they are yielding seven point four seven percent or higher. So it tells me that these stocks are still cheap, right? Despite a uh, good uh, gain for over the past week, they are still pretty much undervalued, right? Investors can still get a very good yield out of it, and if the rebound is indeed true, um, this might be the last chance to bottom fish and lock in this kind of yields going forward. Of course, there are some things that you need to take note of, right? When you buy this kind of uh, China stocks for the dividend yield, first is that they still draw a ten percent dividend taxation. So you need to deduct that 10% from the U, that will be your actual U that you will receive at the end of the day. And second is that um, there are still signs that these China banks are reporting lower earnings and that also possibly mean that their dividends may also decrease. Although I think even if they decrease, it will not be by a big amount, but it's always good to have some allowance and tailor expectations accordingly. Right? So I still do think that some of these uh, big name banks uh, financials uh, and indeed i also believe they are too big to fail right so hence there can be some stability expecting uh, can be expected of them uh, going forward right especially when investors are believing that the worst is over as signaled by the rebound in these sectors the second one is the tech index okay so let me blow this up as well these are the top 10 gainers this week sense time because of its AI, new AI product, and it has really been rallying. For the past one month, it has gone up 132%. Right? That's pretty crazy. Okay, For the past one week, it has gone up 33%. And NIO, which is an EV company, is gone up, has gone up 23%. Xiaopeng, another EV company, up 17%. JD Health, Adi Health, up 13%, 12% respectively. So you can see another Li Auto is also an EV company. So generally um, dominated by either AI or uh, EV related or uh, e-commerce health, right? JD Health, Ali Baba Health, Pingan Good Doctor, all comes together. So they are up more than ten percent uh, for every one of them. So that is th these are the gainers for the tech sector this week in Hang Seng. And uh, what we can also gather from here is that uh, again the poorer performers in the past have also become the top gainers. But I also see that these stocks that we've seen so far, the EVs and the health e-commerce platforms, they tend to be very volatile in their stock prices. So they may go up a lot in one week, they may also come down a lot in one another week. So uh, they, to me, they are a lot more speculative, right? You don't see the store words like Tencent, Alibaba, Baidu, Xiaomi, right? In this uh, top, uh, top gainers because simply their share prices are less volatile. So you also need to be a bit more discerning, right? It's not just about buying the top gainers for the week, but I just wanted to give you a sense where this driver of performances came from. And of course, one easy way to get into the tech index instead of buying the individual stocks is the ETF. There's a Hang Seng Tech ETF. There are many, many different issuers. Um, I think in Hong Kong listed one, C this CSOP Hang Seng Tech Index ETF is the largest by asset size, by fund size. So even the Hang Seng Tech Index is up 10% for this week. Right. Last week, I think it's up 12%. So this two is up 22%. So pretty good return ROI. Right. For someone who hold probably a year to get 20% return, this happens in just two weeks. Okay. So that is the uh, opportunity when it comes to really very beaten down stock. And when they start to rebound, the returns can be very astronomical. And this is uh, the technical analysis that I wanted to share with you, right? So just to orientate you a little bit, um, the red line, the red curve right, that you see on the chart is a 200 day moving average. That will give us the general trend of the market, right? For a stock or an ETF to be considered bullish, the prices must be above this red line. So we can see that it just went above this red line. Otherwise, for most part of the last two to three years, the prices have been bearish prices have been below the red line okay and this is not the first time it tries to break past the red line we can see that there were two other episodes last year at the start of 2023 and uh, around august 2023 right the share price or this etf price actually went above the 200 day moving average 
Uh, but I still think that this is too early, right? It's a good sign. Okay, it's a, definitely a good sign that rebound is coming. But I would say that there are some other signs that I want to look out for, right? Such as the moving average pointing upwards. Um, there's also another blue curve that you see on the chart. That is the shorter moving average. It's a 100-day moving average. It's still below the 200-day moving average, right? So for really a bullish trend, the blue line should be above the red line. The prices should be above both the blue line and the red line. Okay, and they should all be pointing outwards. So it is a uh, early sign that the trend may be changing, but it is not confirmed yet. So this is what I would say that um, the it's too early to say Hong Kong stocks are in a bull run at this moment. Okay, you might be surprised to hear from me to say that, but it is still early from a technical analysis perspective. All right. So the third one, uh, the third sector we are looking at is property stocks. Okay, so I think generally investors find it very, uh, or they are probably concerned and probably re refrain from buying this kind of property stock due to the property crisis that's going on in China. Um, but it's not possible for all the property companies to go down, to go under. Right? There may be one or two more, right? we won't know, but I don't think majority of the property stocks will go down. Okay. Um, there can be opportunities, right? Because if we take a look at this uh, uh, property stocks, a lot of them has also gone up, right? Um, if we look at the China overseas long for all this went up more than ten percent. Newer development, Hang Long, China Resources Land, they all up uh, end up about seven to eight percent higher. So there are opportunities that um, if one really are comfortable buying some of these property stocks but of course drill down to their debt level uh, the assets they are holding and if they are holding more hong kong properties probably they are in better shape than compared to if they hold the mainland properties so there are uh, opportunities to look at, and a lot of these property stocks listed on hong kong exchange are actually the blue chip ones right so uh, they can be value turnaround place right because the pessimism once over the share price will be able to jump up Okay, and if we look at property stocks, uh, one of good measure will probably be using the price book ratio. Right, so I table, I I've created, I screenshot the table for you over here, and I rank them from the lowest, cheapest price of book ratio to the uh, highest price of book ratio. And you can see many of these uh, property stocks are actually trading below zero point five times their book value. Okay, so they are indeed cheap. Which, in other words, they are selling the properties below half price. Right, the properties that they are holding, uh, generally speaking. Of course, the devil is in details, right? Uh, it takes some homework to look at their financials, to look at the properties that they have, to look at their debt to equity ratio, gearing ratio, um, and you know, uh, look at some of the management discussion on the outlook of their property portfolio as well, and whether the sales are improving uh, in that sense, right? But I think generally, if the properties are in Hong Kong, it should do better than those with a lot of properties in mainland China, right? as I said just now. Okay, so that is all a quick update about the Hong Kong market. Give you a sense what's going on. I do think that something is brewing over there and it does uh, pace if you look at it uh, and give more attention to it in the next, at least the next few months. Right? I do think that there can be exciting development coming. Right, it's still too early to call a bull run at this point in time, but the rebound is encouraging. If you want to know more about China stocks, Hong Kong stocks, uh, do follow me on this growthdragons.substack.com. You'll get weekly updates. You will get uh, more insights about how to interpret the China situation, right? especially if you're an investor interested in the Chinese market. This is something that you should subscribe to. Okay, I'll keep the link in the description box. You just click on it and you can uh, sign up for free. And uh, that's all for me this week. And hopefully you like this video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.